Hey, what's going up, guys? And time for another episode of Intermission. Um, for you old guys, you know what Intermission's about. But for you new guys, or you just run, running around randomly on YouTube looking for things to watch, well, you just hit the right place. Um, the intermission is basically, I talk about everything in between my belts, from what I'm using for tools to anything related to the hobby. Um, <clears throat> so... We're going to talk about a uh, interesting subject today. I'm going to be talking about the shelf of doom. <laughs> every time I hit, every time I say that, I get a giggle for some reason. I don't know why. I actually, the shelf of doom. There's actually two things. You got your stash, which is back here, which is my stash of unbuilt kits I have yet to get to. And then there is the shelf of doom, which is the latter. Basically, the shelf of doom is kits that have been stopped halfway, just started, or almost finished, and they end up going to the shelf for whatever myriad of reasons. Um, in my case, sometimes it's just, I can't get into something I'm working on, so I just put it on the shelf. Sometimes you don't have the parts you need, or you're missing parts, so it ends up going back on the shelf. Or you just lose interest, or I lose interest, um, for some reason why. Hence, the shelf of doom, it just ends up sitting on the shelf for a while. Sorry, I was just being nosy. It ends up being on the shelf for a while, and then eventually you break it out, and you just finish it. Either you finish it, or you just lose interest again, and it goes back on the shelf. Hence, shelf of doom. Um, I have a couple myself. I'm guilty of this myself, although I've tamed it down a lot over the years. I used to have, like, piles of half-built kits that I just lose interest in for many reasons. Sometimes I just don't have it in me to finish it. Sometimes I get distracted. At case in point, I had a house hunting last year. Um, I got a son, as you already know, I've mentioned him a few times, and, or I got too many things going on, or I've been working long hours. Case in point, this past month, I just, or this month, since we're at the almost at the end of May, I've been working long hours, and whatever time I did get in between was maybe about half an hour or maybe an hour at the most. So, hence, shelf of doom. Um, like I said, I'm guilty of this like everybody else is. For you old veterans, you know what it's about. But for you new guys, this is something you want to avoid doing because if you start doing it, it'll keep happening worse and worse. Eventually, you're going to have a pile of half-built kits and you're just going to look like, all right, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> so anyway, like I said, I only have a couple because I've tamed it down a lot. Two of them I... Two that really do need attention. I got an old Ravel Monogram F4 kit, which is right here. The reason why I stopped working on this one is because I was having hassles with some acrylic paints I was working with, as well as issues with the double action brush, which has been a long time since I've used the double action. I was just so used to using the single action before I finally got a new double action. So I had a lot of problems with the paint I was using, so I took a breather from it, and I never really got back to it. This has been sitting under my bench since last year. And then, there's this one. The old uh, Dragon 135th scale M1A1 Abrams kit. Now, I've been, this has been on and off my bench for the past couple of years. It is in various stages. I already got the road wheels done and already dry fit and assembled. But, and I already got the bottom hole painted, as you can see here. I got the bottom hole painted. But some reason or another, I just stopped at a certain point. I guess I just really couldn't get into it, and so I put it on the shelf. But as you can tell here, I stopped at the priming point. Although I did get the turret assembly, but it's not quite finished yet, so I it was on and off. I also have a Kinetic F-16 kit, which I was tinkering with on and off for the past couple of years. I haven't touched it in the past year. I should finish that one. But back to the Dragon kit. Now... Dragon's M1A1 Abrams kit, it's a nice kit, but it's a challenging kit. And for those of you who have built Dragon's models, they're not the easiest kits in the world to build, especially their armor kits. I've, I'm no stranger to them, and some of us who have built them know how challenging they can be. They can also be difficult, especially in the fit department. Even though the box art is nice, the assembly is a whole different story. And sometimes they got issues. But this kit in particular that, I'm more, that I've been dealing with for the past couple of years. It is a really, really nice kit. It's it's a challenging kit, but it's also rewarding if you know your research, if you know what you're doing. And I knew what I was doing, and like I said, for some reason I just lost interest. There was a lot of reasons. There was a couple of reasons why I lost the interest. One of them was the 
was my original plan was since it came with an interior set and a tank crew, I was going to use all of those. But some, somehow, somewhere along the way, I lost all the parts. Not all the parts. I only lost some parts for the interior. So that kind of knocked my interest level down. And then there was the challenge of building this. Because before, I built a um, T-72 kit from Tamiya. And before that, I built another one of Dragon's M1 Abrams kits, which took me about about three months to finish up because it was just that difficult to work with. I had to do a lot of puttying, filling, sanding, you name it, I did it. Got it done though. I also have I also have a stowage set for this. I have a spare set of tracks, which is right here in my hands. So this was gonna help me along, but for some reason, as I said, the interest started to die. And also, I was doing a lot of work on it because I was building it as a U.S. Marine Corps version. The last Abrams kit from Dragon I built was an Army version. And there's a few differences here and there. And like I said, as I went along, I just started losing more and more interest. And I was like, you know what? Let me put this on the shelf until I regain interest again. And I did. Took it out a little bit, worked on it a little bit, started losing interest again. Because part of the problems I was tackling. And I just shelved it for a while and started working on other stuff. Now, I'm hoping I can finish this off, but this, like, as I said before, the Shelf of Doom it can be a real hassle. Um, it can be a major problem, especially if you just especially if you just don't want to build anymore. Then you got all this stuff, you're like, what am I going to do with it? In my case, it's just, you know what, I can get back to that later. And eventually I do, once I regain my mojo. And I'm hoping I got the mojo for this so I can finish this up. I really am, because it's, a, it's one of my favorite kits, but it's also, as I said before... It's a challenge belt because because of the fit and sometimes sometimes you gotta do some work on it and I think at th that time when I was building on it I was just I got spoiled by the Tamiya kit because it was just so easy to put together and assemble without any problems. Well, let's see what I could do with this one. Hopefully, I can finish it. Um, as I said before, it, that's something you want to avoid. It really is, especially in a hobby, because it can. It can really be detrimental because when you look at everything, it could be, if you have enough of them, it could be overwhelming. And that's what you don't want. You actually want to look and say, you know what, I'm going to finish this from beginning to end. And that's what you want to do. I do have a couple other, couple others. Well, as I said before, I did a lot. I've, I used to be a lot worse, but now I've tamed a beast quite a bit. I still got an old Ariotaki Zero kit that I got to work on it got stopped midway through for some reason i think i know why because i got distracted um <laughs> that was during the week that my son was born so everything else that got pushed to the side and when i came back then when i came home i started working on something else and i forgot about it um as for the phantom i really do gotta get back into that that was a uh, project i wanted to do and it was a online build that we had going and I just lost interest, like you said, because of the hassles with the airbrush and stuff. So I'm probably going to do a strip the paint on that eventually. Anyway, so as I went back to the Dragon Kit, I started to realize, where did I leave off? I don't even remember where I left off. All I know is turret, hull, and other parts. I mean, I did get the barrel done, but I just don't remember where I last left off. I think I was working on the snorkel, this, the waiting gear for the rear end of the, of the tank. I think... I gotta get my bearings on this and figure out where I last left off and finish it off. Uh, this can, that's the other thing about the shelf of doom. It can, you can, you'll end up forgetting what you were working on. It's what you don't want to do, especially when you're working on something. Like I said, if you're, you're missing parts or something and you're just like, okay, what do I do? Well, like I said, hopefully, hopefully I don't lose the interest. I'm going to try to get this finished. If not, I have other projects to work on, or I might take a breather for a little while. Because sometimes if you're doing that many half-assed projects, that means you need a break. And when you need a break, it's time to just step away from everything for a little while, which is probably what I'm going to do. Because the my last build took a lot of my attention. And it wasn't just that. It was also work. It was other things. So sometimes you do need a break. But... The Shelf of Doom is something you really got to avoid. Stash is one thing. Now, if you just, if you're not building a hobby anymore, you still got a bunch of unbuilt kits that you really never touch, you can always sell those again. But <laughs> you don't want to go that route. I apologize for repeating myself and running around in circles. I really just, like I said, I'm, I'm worn out. I'm tired from long hours of work. And I'm even though I finally got that last kit I built done, 
I'm still just exhausted, and I'm probably going to take a break from this for a little bit, clean up, clean up my bench, of course, and then once I'm ready, get back to the tank, and hopefully I'll get it done. As I said before, it can be very difficult to finish, take over where you left off, or sometimes you have to start over again, and all, and maybe one day you'll, you'll remember where you started. Who knows? Uh, this is all I got for now. Yeah, I'm just rambling on for a bit. So, happy modeling. Take it easy, guys. And hopefully, I'll talk to you again soon and figure out where I'm going to go from here. Have a good one.